Hey everybody, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools channel. Today we're going to talk about gripping tools every DIYer should have. See you right after this. Tools fall into several categories. Either they're measuring something, cutting something, spraying something, meaning expelling a substance, whether it be paint, a cleaning solution, gas, or even flames, spreading something like a spatula or putty knife. Tools do it all. But today, let's talk about some of the must-have gripping tools that every DIYer should have in their toolbox. Now, if you don't have one of these in your toolbox, it's probably not a toolbox. You gotta have a crescent wrench. One of the most useful tools to have around your house. Why? Because sometimes you're gonna have to loosen or tighten a nut just to get access to something, or it may be the opposite. You may wanna reduce access to something, enclosing it in a structure that has metal nuts tightening up the enclosure. Well, as strong as you think your fingers may be as far as tightening those nuts, they're not gonna get it as tight as a wrench. Now, this is also called an adjustable wrench. Why? Because the jaws of the wrench can expand or contract depending on the size of the nut that you're dealing with. So all you have to do is twist the screw-like structure here to expand or contract the jaws of the wrench. Now this expands to about an inch and a half wide, which will allow you to get around an inch and a half wide nut and smaller. And of course, these come in different sizes. And even though it doesn't necessarily grip something, it does have jaws that enclose around an object to either tighten or loosen it. And when pressure is applied, its gripping action does kick in. You gotta get one if you don't have one. Now, this type of wrench here is also very handy, especially if you're working on cars where nuts and bolts are hard to reach. Now, if you notice here, it has an open-ended side and it has a closed-ended side. This side right here is also called a box end. And that's because it can fit over six-sided nuts or four-sided nuts. And that's why it's called a box-ended wrench. This size is 17 millimeters. And the size on this one is about 19 millimeters. So this one's a little bigger. But can you tell the difference between this one and this one? Well, this one actually has a ratcheting mechanism. So if you place it over a nut, let's pretend my finger's that nut, you can use the ratcheting mechanism to loosen or tighten the nut. But remember, if you're tightening it this way, you have to take it off, flip it over to loosen it this way. These wrenches usually come in sets. And like I said, they're great for those hard to reach nuts. Okay, now this right here is definitely a must have. They're known as slip joint pliers, tongue and groove pliers, but they're commonly known as channel locks. The thing about channel locks is that its jaw range is about three inches. That's one and a half times more than the crescent wrench. So obviously you have one and a half more options to grip onto something. These tools are used a lot in the plumbing industry to grip onto pipes and so forth. And you can tell why they call them channel locks. There's a channel right here, and this arm of the tool can slide up and down that channel and grip onto anything that falls into that three inch range. Upon closer examination, it has these grooves right here. And on the other side, it has this ridge. So when you close it, this ridge is actually sliding into one of these grooves, whichever one you choose. And because of its tongue and groove design, it locks in place as long as you keep it closed. And because of the teeth that the channel locks have, it can grip onto different materials like metal. Crescent wrenches don't have teeth. Okay guys, vice grips. Now vice grips are your best friend in the shop. Even if you don't have a shop, you're definitely gonna need some vice grips. Why? Because they're like your second hand or third hand. Cause you only got two, right? I can't tell you how many times a vice grip has saved my life when doing these videos. When it's just only me here, I don't have to worry because I have my man right here. The jaw range is about six inches. That's twice the size of a channel lock's jaw range. But vices can be pretty heavy, so it's not as ergonomic as a channel lock. Definitely not as light. Imagine trying to carry one of these around all day. Nevertheless, it's not meant to be carried around. This is a stationary tool. You see these right here? That's meant for you to bolt your vice grip onto your table or your chosen spot. Once you open the jaws, place your material inside and just tighten the jaws. I guarantee you it's not going anywhere. You can cut your pipe, 
You can do whatever you want to it. Your vice will hold it in there, no problem. I really can't see how a real DIYer would do without it. And vice is also double as anvils. It has this flat metal surface where you can hammer out the kinks in your material, which is mostly made of metal most of the time. This is also another lifesaver. It's also called a vice grip. It's actually the real term for this. It's definitely smaller and lighter than the vice we just talked about. Its jaw range is also expandable, but the way you do that is by turning the screw right here. That's how you expand or contract the jaws of the tool depending on the size of your material. So if I take this pipe for instance and I want to grab onto it with the vice grip, it won't happen because I need to expand the jaws a little more. So I turn the screw counterclockwise and open up the jaws a little bit more. I can now fit the pipe into the jaws, but I need to do one more thing. I need to be able to close the vice grip all the way. I'm still not able to do it because I need to open the jaws a little bit more. That's what I want to happen. I want to be able to close the arms of the vice grip completely. That way it locks onto the material. You can see how useful this tool can be. Because of the teeth on the jaws and the locking mechanism, it grabs onto this metal pipe and doesn't let go. That's due to the way it's designed. It's spring-loaded. Once it reaches a certain tension point, it locks in to hold the vise in place. But how do you unlock it? Well, you simply open it up. Or you pull the metal flap on this arm up. Vice grips are so handy, I can't even tell you how many times I've used them in a tight situation just to grip onto something when I had nothing else. Absolute must-have. Okay, this is pretty much a no-brainer right here. Clamps. They're right up there with every other tool I just talked about. Matter of fact, I've even used clamps to clamp down my vice. Yeah, that big heavy vice I just showed you guys. I use these to clamp that down. That's how useful these are. Because I didn't want to drill holes into my table and bolt the vice to the table. So I use the clamps for that. These things are absolutely amazing. If you want to open it up, just pull back on this lever. The jaw range on these clamps is about six and three sixteenths inches. So it's a little bit wider than the vice. A lot of woodworkers use these to fasten their work, to keep the wood together after they glued it all. So many uses for clamps. Gotta have these no matter what. I know you guys know what this is. It's called a needle nose pliers. Why is it called that? Well, look at the end of it. It's tapered all the way to a very sharp point, and it allows you to get in those very tight spaces to grab something. But that's not all there is to it. It has a cutting portion, so you can take something like wire, How much more handy can you get? When it comes to replacing fuses in your fuse box, in the car or wherever, this is great for pulling them out. Besides having a fuse puller, of course. But other than that, this is your go-to tool. Okay, for everybody that loves to work on their cars, you know at some point you're gonna have to change your oil filter, right? How are you gonna twist that thing off unless you got pretty strong hands? Or you can use an oil filter clamp, or an oil filter wrench as they call it. Let's pretend this is your oil filter and you need to take it off. Well, you just take your clamp, put it around the filter, take the handle, Twist it until the clamp grips onto your filter. Then you just twist it off. Then when you want to take it off, just flip the handle back the other way and it'll open up on you. I don't think there's any way to get around not having this thing if you're working on your cars. Now these two right here are called strap wrenches. We've got a bigger one and a smaller one. They're also called rubber wrenches because this is pretty much a long rubber strap that wraps around your object that you want to loosen. Or tighten. They operate pretty much off of the same principle as the oil filter clamp. Except you can open up that strap, place it around your object that you want to loosen, put it back in there, tighten it on, and twist it off. Now this is heavy duty right here. All right, so those are just some of the gripping tools every DIYer or homeowner should have. I probably missed some, but you definitely won't miss with those. If you like the content, hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to check out the links below, and I'll see you guys next time.